per viewer request, this week we're going to look at similarity and scale factor. And what we're going to think about really with scale factor and similarity is the idea that something's either been enlarged or reduced, but everything's in the same proportion. So for instance, if I was to be shrunk to five inches tall or to 150 feet tall, in relation to my face, my hand would look the same size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through some examples. We'll start off with some easier examples and we'll also prove to you that these things are actually true. The scale factor does, it's completely relevant. So our first example here, we've got two rectangles. And what we're asked to do is calculate the enlargement scale factor. And what I'm going to do in order to help me with this is I'm going to look at the four step guide here. We won't actually need to use all four of these steps at this moment. We'll only need... So in step one here, we have to look at the corresponding sides from each shape. And then to get the scale factor, we just do the new side over the old side. So in this... So in this example, this would be the, these are the two corresponding sides, and this would be the new one because we're enlarging it. So it's going to be new over old. So it's 18 over six. And what we should always say in these questions is always simplify if you can. So 18 over six simplifies to three. So essentially it's been enlarged by a factor of three. So everything is going to be three times as large in this any, any of the dimensions on these sides will be three times the dimensions on the other shape. I'm going to do another example. So this time, we have another example, another rectangle. Um, we've got this rectangle here, and we've got this rectangle here. And we want to, first of all, calculate the enlargement scale factor. So it's exactly what we did before. So how much it's enlarged by, we do the new side over the old side. So it's 10 over 5, and we know that that can just be simplified to 2. So that there is our enlargement scale factor. Now the second part here, this moves on to similarity, and we're asked to calculate sine x. So in order to do this, it's step 4, where you're using the similarity formula in order to find a missing side, area or volume. And it's this one here we're going to use. So to find the missing side, we do the scale factor to the power of 1 times the old side. So the scale factor, essentially, to the power of 1 times the old side. Now the old side is this one here. So these are corresponding. So this is the old side. Our scale factor was 2. So we can just put that one there. Because it's a side, it's just the power of 1. So essentially, you don't really need the 1. But it sets you up quite well if you're going to do area 1s or volume 1s. So it's 2 to the power of 1 is just 2. And then multiply by 3 is 6. So this side here would be 6 centimetres. I'm going to try another one with you. So we have another example this time. This time it's two triangles, because it can actually be any shape. So the first thing we're asked to do is calculate the reduction scale factor. So it's the idea of reducing this one to this one. So it's the new over the old. So it's 6 over 8. And the important thing to always remember is to simplify. So that simplifies to 3 over 4. So this is essentially 3 quarters of this. And when we're asked to calculate side x, this is when we use the similarity formula and when it's a missing side it's just scale factor to the power of 1 times old side. So our scale factor is 3 over 4 to the power of 1 times and the old side is 10 because it's corresponding to the one we're trying to find. And essentially, because it's just a power of 1, the 1 just disappears. So it's really just 3 quarters of 10, which is 7.5 centimetres. So this x is 7.5 centimetres. OK, we're going to move on to some examples where we have area. So in this example, this is more typical of the type of 
question that you would get at National 5, where it doesn't ask you about the scale factor, it just asks you to find the area of the smaller shape or the larger shape. Now I should point out in this instance, we're talking about squares and obviously it's easy to work out the area of a square. So we know in this one, obviously 5.5 .5 would be 25. But what I'm doing here is I'm using this as an example to prove to you that the formula actually works. So what we would do here is we could just take it back to our, our rules here. So the first thing we had to do was look at the corresponding sides from each shape. And then the new side comes from the shape with a missing side or area or volume. So obviously in this instance, the missing one is the one with the five. And then we get the scale factor. So, the current, so if we come back to here and... Right. So what we do here essentially is just what we've done before. Although I've obviously given you the steps there. We just do the new over old. So it's 5 over 7. And this is our scale factor. And then what we do... So this time we've got a missing area. So we can use the missing area formula here. And this is where we do the scale factor and we square it times the old area. So scale factor... Because it's area, we square it times old area. Our scale factor is 5 over 7, so we can replace that with 5 over 7. Old area is 49. So 5 over 7 squared is 25 over 49. So it becomes 25 over 49 times 49. So what this bit here becomes. So the 49s cancel out and the answer is 25 centimetres squared. What would be a good, good idea is perhaps to get a screenshot, maybe copy these four steps down and then these three rules as well. I'm going to do another example. So in this example we've got two circles. Now circles are obviously mathematically similar. And in actual fact, you wouldn't necessarily need to use similarity in order to work out the area of this one. But we're just going to use this one as a means of proving to you that it works. So to find the area of the smaller circle, we get the reduction scale factor first of all. So we get the new side over the old side, which is 10 over 12. And then that simplifies to 5 over 6. So that's our scale factor. And then... What we do is we use the last formula that we've done in the previous question for the missing area. So you have the scale factor, and this time it's to the power of 2, because it's area. So if it's length, it's just the power of 1. If it's area, it's to the power of 2. And if it's volume, it's to the power of 3. And then we times it by the old area. So we can just fill these values in. The scale factor is 5 over 6. And the old area is, so the area of the larger one was 113.1 centimetres squared. And when you put that into a calculator, so 5 over 6 squared times 113.1 centimetres squared, we get 78.5 centimetres squared. So that would be the area of the smaller circle. Obviously, you could also work that out just using pi r squared. So you could have just done it pi times 5 squared and you would have got the same answer. I'm going to go on to some other examples now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do these final three examples where one is just working out a missing side, one's working out a missing area, and one's working out a missing volume. And the only difference being that the power for side is 1, Area is 2 in volume, which we've not done, is 3. So we have this example here. We've got two, I should say they're all mathematically similar shapes. And these are like two parallelograms. And we are asked to find side x. So we do exactly what we've done before. We do the enlargement scale factor. So we have new over old. 
which is 40 over 32. We then have to simplify that as much as we can. So both of those numbers divide by 8, so the top becomes 5 and the bottom becomes 4. And then what we've done with these ones is we've just done the scale factor to the power of 1 times the old side, and the old side is 20. Scale factor is 5 over 4. So 5 over 4 to the power of 1, that disappears. So it's just 5 fourths of 20, which is just 25. So x is 25 centimetres. We'll do another example of each. So in this example, we've got two mathematically similar triangles and we're asked to find the area of the small triangle, this one here. Hopefully this sheet will stay put this time. Um, so what we do, do what we always did before, we do new over old, new side over old side. So it's 10 over 16. And that can simplify to 5 over 8. So that is the scale factor. And then if we want to get the area, so to get the area, we do scale factor and the power is 2 and we times by the old area. So the scale factor is 5 over 8. And the old area was 64. And if we do 5 over 8 squared times 64, we get 25. So that is the area of this triangle. Our third and final example next is going to be a volume one. So this final example is just volume and it's very, very similar, the only difference being the number three. So we're asked to find the volume of the smaller keg. So we do the usual new over old. So we get the scale factor. So it's 20 over 24. And that simplifies to 5 over 6. And then to get volume, we do scale factor cubed times old volume. So the scale factor is 5 over 6. And the old volume is 4489, 4489 centimetres cubed. And then when we work that out, we get... So that would be the volume of the smaller keg. So I hope this has been useful. Please like, please subscribe and please feel free to suggest any other maths videos you would like to see. Bye!